Thank you very much and, and welcome again. Yesterday evening, uh, as uh, Imam Abdullah Salki gave his prayer, I, I was moved to share something with you today. Uh, I mentioned before that I was uh, baptized and raised Catholic. What I didn't mention is that I'm originally from the island of Malta in the Mediterranean. It's a little island. Our native tongue is Maltese, which is a Semitic dialect, the dialect of Arabic. Um, and so listening to him pray in, in Arabic just took me back home. But I also wanted to share with you, I think you'll find this interesting. Um, I went to church for many years, uh, so a Catholic church, a Christian church, praying to Allah, because that's our word in Maltese for God. So in case you didn't know, there's a community in this world that is Christian that prays to Allah. So I thought, it, I thought you would appreciate that. So, so what, what I've been asked to talk about today is this question of, of, of virtuous business. And I think it fits in the question of what, what does it take to fully bring your faith uh, to work? Um, because we know that that's not a given, right? We, we know people of faith, religious people, who, who don't seem to bring their faith to work, who seem to feel like they have to check their, their faith at the door, sometimes because they're afraid, afraid of offending, afraid of being stigmatized. Other times, I know some people where it seems like their faith makes absolutely no, no difference to, 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 their, to their work. Um, and that can be an issue, right? There's a, a quote I have here from the Second Vatican Council of the Catholic Church um, who expressed a concern, I'll read it, about those who, quote, think that religion consists in acts of worship alone and in the discharge of certain moral obligations and who imagine they can plunge themselves into earthly affairs in such a way as to imply that these are altogether divorced from the religious life. This split between the faith which many profess and their daily lives deserves to be counted among the more serious errors of our age. Right? When, when we don't or we're unable to live our faith out in, in the working world, this is an issue. One of our colleagues here at Catholic University, Dr. Brandon Vadianathan, um, He's uh, chair of our sociology department, um, and he wanted to, to study this phenomenon and particularly see how it was playing out in, in global capitalism, particularly in the global south. So he did two in-depth studies, uh, one in Dubai, which is where he's from originally, and one in Bangalore um, among IT managers, um, 200 in-depth interviews in, in total. And he was interviewing middle managers in IT who were professedly pe people of faith, serious people of faith who are very active in their, in their faith lives. Um, so not just occasional participants kind of thing. Um, in interviewing them, this came out when he talked about their faith, and they would say things like, my, my self-worth comes from God, comes from God alone, that I, I, I feel I have to forgive those, even those who've done great wrong to me. So kind of strong religious sentiments. But then the very same people, when he, when he talked to them about their life at work, said things like, I'm just in it for the cash. I don't care anything about loyalty to the company. Um, is, they, they would say things like, you may not agree with what they ask you to do, but you just need to do it to get the promotion. Or they would say, I cannot trust these people. Everyone is trying to, out to just get ahead. It, it's the stark kind of difference between who they were as a religious person and who they were at, at work. It, it seems incongruous to me, it seems so, so to him. I'm not going to mention which religion they belong to so as not to offend anyone. Okay, they're Catholic. <laughs> um, but, but I do think it's a widespread problem. I don't think it's just a Catholic thing, this sort of division of, of faith, faith and work. Um, it, it seems that there would be many reasons why people would do this. Um, one of which, I think, is this implicit assumption that being effective at work and being religious uh, are at best irrelevant to each other and at worst incompatible. That some religions talk about, you know, loving the poor and giving away and so on, and well, how could that be compatible with business? So I need, I need to sort of separate, separate my life. Um, St. Thomas Aquinas has a quote where he says that trade has a certain element of baseness associated with it, you know? So when, when you read stuff like that, you think, oh, I guess there must be something not religious about business, you know? Um, so the challenge is how to, how to bring those two worlds completely and fully, fully together, to live, to live a unified life, an integrated life, right? a life of, of integrity. 
Uh, and, and there's something that we find very, very useful in teaching this to our students here at the Bush School, and it's the concept of virtue, the idea of virtue. So what is a virtue? A virtue is simply a good habit, right? And the opposite of virtue is a vice, which is a bad habit. So it'd be things like, you know, lying, cheating, stealing, gossiping, these are bad habits or vices. Um, being kind, being trustworthy, these are uh, good habits or, or, or virtues. The, the, these vir the virtues or good habits are ones that fit with our human nature, right? That, that, that make us and those around us happy. When you live a virtuous life, you tend to be a happier person. People around you tend to be, tend to be happier. It makes sense, right? If you're in the habit of being good to others, then you'll have lots of friends and you'll tend to be successful, you know, so why not be happy? Whereas the vices do the opposite. So what is the connection with religion, you know, and, and, and virtue? The connection is the idea that God made us a certain way, right? We made us to be good. We are flawed, you know, but we are, but we are good. Uh, we're made to be good. And, uh, and actually more specifically in, in Judaism, in Christianity, in, I believe in Sufi Islam, the notion that we're made actually in the image of God, right? Um, and that being made in a certain way by God, designed in a certain way, means that there are certain behaviors that work for us as human beings, right? And, and virtue are those behaviors that work for us. And that when we act the way we were designed to act, everything comes out better, right? People are happier, people are, are good to each other, and, and communities flourish. The, 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 the fact that our religions teach us not to lie or cheat or steal or kill is not just because it's bad for others when we lie to them or steal from them or kill them, right? But it's also, in a certain sense, bad for us, right? When I lie to somebody, in some ways I do more damage to myself than to the person I lie to. Because the person I lie to gets some typically temporary disadvantage from that lie, right? Or similar, if I, say if I stole from somebody, they get a disadvantage of losing what they stole. But what happens to me is I've made my character to be more like a liar or a thief, right? And that's ultimately much more harmful to myself than, than to another, right? So the so point of acting virtuously, not just because it's good for others, but because it's good for ourselves as well. The, the really great thing about virtues is that they are habits. In other words, they can be cultivated and practiced, that anybody can grow in virtue by practicing. And this is very contrary to the secular notion of business ethics or of ethics in general, where there's a sense that if it's not hard, then it's not really ethical. You know, they're just like somehow to be a fully ethical person, you must be suffering and struggling. That if there's no struggle, then how, how ethical could that be? You know, virtue is the opposite. The more you practice a virtue, the easier it gets. It, 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 if you think about it, it's obvious. Right? The more you tell the truth, the easier you get at telling the truth. And the more uncomfortable you get if you feel like you, you're inclined to tell a lie. And so th the more you do good, the easier it becomes to do good. And you can see why this is good for business, right? The more virtuous people you have in the business, the, the better, the stronger the business is going to be. There are four what are called the cardinal virtues, which are sort of central virtues, and then all the other virtues tend to cluster around them. I want to go through those. And then what I'd like to do is, if I have enough time, is just sort of open up to your comments and thoughts. Do, does this concept fit with my religion? Could this concept work in my company? Just to kind of get a sort of a, a practical take on this. Uh, so the first is called prudence, and it's the habit of making wise decisions. Right? So, so it's considering all the options carefully, weighing the principles, uh, weighing the evidence, and making thoughtful decisions. So one who habitually does that is, becomes a prudent person. Justice is the habit of being fair to others, right? giving to each, or, uh, each other to his or her due, figuring out what each person deserves in a particular situation, in a particular circumstances, and making sure they get them. So think about considering whether somebody ought to be promoted, for example. Somebody who is a just person is in the habit of considering all these things and making a fair decision. Fortitude, or courage, is the third cardinal virtue, and this is the habit of doing the right thing even when you're afraid, right? So it's not a question of feeling. None of these are, in fact, a question of feeling. They're a question of more of, of practice. Um, so you could be terrified and still be a very courageous person because if you still do the right thing uh, in a particular situation. And again, the more you do the right thing, even when you're afraid, the more courageous you become and the easier it becomes. And the fourth one is temperance, or the, the habit of resisting temptation, the temptation to do something wrong. 
um, resisting what's bad for you or what's bad, bad for others. Um, so not eating to excess, not, not lashing out to others when you're angry, you know, that sort, that sort of thing. So the, the proposal we have is that living the virtues is a way for religious people and really anybody, right, to, to live out their faith at work because it gives us a structure and a practice for living as people of faith in a work environment. Um, so anyway, th that's the sort of the, the essence of it, and it's the essence of what we teach here at the Bush School. I'd just love to get now your, your reaction. This is a golden opportunity for us to get kind of your take from your different perspectives. Yes? Th that, How do we write that? That is such a great question. I'll read the question. The question is, saying that faith helps us to be more virtuous, does that imply that people who have no faith can't be virtuous? First point to make to that question always is, it was the pagans that invented virtue. So, so people without faith who invented virtue. So, so manifestly, it cannot be the case that if you don't have faith, you can't be virtuous. And so there are many people who have no faith who would aspire to these virtues. The Stoics, for example, a clap from, from ancient Greece, and there are modern Stoics as well. People, they're very concerned about virtue. Um, we, as people of faith, I think, believe we get extra help. Right? Somebody talked about grace before. And I think you can say that without, without offending. So, so everybody's free to find their own path of virtue. Right? But I think we can all agree that being vicious is not a good thing. Right? So, so, so people of faith and not, uh, people who are not of, of faith um, can agree on that. Right? So here's something that we can all do together. It, it, it's an extra bonus, if you, I think, as, as a person of faith. I, I mentioned this last night at dinner, you know, that it, it's really hard to do good year in, year out without God's help. I, I think that. It's been my experience, and I was an atheist for a while, so I know it from experience, you know. Maybe I was just a really bad atheist. But <laughs> <laughs> so, so, anyway, does that, does that answer your question? That was a great question. Thank you. Yes? Wow. These are really great questions. <laughs> So, so the question was, what, how do you manage the apparent tension, right, between living virtuously and apparently survival of the fittest, right? Right, so sometimes that survival of the fittest notion gets, gets promoted in a, in a company. Um, I have seen, and, and over the years, there have been a number of studies over the decades, um, and they don't always call it virtuous behavior, but sometimes they call it altruism, you know. But in general, what the studies find is that over the medium and long term, what we would call good behavior tends to be more prosperous behavior. So companies that foster collaborative behavior among their employees tend to do better on a sustained basis. In the short term, it's always possible to maximize gains by cutting corners, right? We know that from every aspect of life, particularly in business. And some companies, unfortunately, cultivate a culture that encourages that sort of short um, shortcuts. Um, and it's not, you know, we're not talking necessarily about illegal behavior, just very kind of selfish type of behaviors. Uh, but those companies don't tend to prosper over the longer term. Um, and so a company that's looking for long-term sustained growth um, would do well to support, uh, to support virtue. Um, the, the, I want to make it just a little side point to the, uh, the first question. I, I think one of the benefits of being a person of faith is you have additional resources to resist those temptations to cut corners along the way. You know, if, you, if you believe that God's watching at all times, even if compliance isn't, you, know, you, you have added incentive. You know? So, so um, the, 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 the virtue of prudence in particular, I think, is a really powerful one. And, and it's a word. These, these words are so old that they've kind of gotten misused and it, to, to be prudent almost has this kind of negative connotation almost as bad as the temperance, you know, the, 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 uh, the virtue of temperance. Nowadays we think of it just in terms of prohibition, somebody who doesn't drink, you know, but, but these are much richer words and particularly prudence, um, the, you know, the habit of making wise decisions. So the, the wisdom of a decision will take into account the financial implications. Absolutely. Right? We're running companies. If we, can, if we don't make money, we're no longer a company. You know, I, I explain to our students, you know, without profit, you're just another not-for-profit and someone else has to make money to fund you, right? So, so <laughs> the beauty of a business is it's done well is an organization that serves society and sustains itself rather than being dependent on somebody else, right? So, so, so prudence takes all of that very seriously. You know, we, you calculate net present values and you, you, you look at all the legal implications, 
but you also look at the full human implications as well. And you know that if you violate the human implications, that doesn't go unpunished over the long term, that people, that people will lose motivation, you'll lose retention, all the things that we've kind of been talking about today. Does that answer yeah, your question? Up, yeah. Great, very good. Yes, sir. Could you talk about the difference between virtuous behavior as a means to an end and virtuous behavior as an end in itself? And the sustainability of virtuous behavior, if in fact it's merely a means to an end. Very good. Um, so, so be, being virtuous as a means to an end versus virtuous as an end in itself, both are good, and I'll explain, I'll explain why. There's an element with virtue of fake it till you make it. That if you're not courageous, you know, and you're terrified of everything, you just try. You know, you just try. And let's say you're trying because the research says if you do, you'll feel better. You know, so you try. Eventually, you keep trying it hard enough, you eventually become courageous. So, so, so you get there. And then what you discover along the way, to your second point, is and this is why I think virtue theory is, as you say, it's just so aligns with, our, with who we are as human beings and why it trumps by far any other theory of ethics. So I mentioned last night I did a, a, a PhD in business ethics, so I studied all the theories ad nauseum. No theory other than virtue ethics can give you a solid reason why should I be ethical. They'll tell you how to be ethical, but there is no answer as to why. They'll say things like, well, you might get caught. Okay, well, may, or maybe not. Are you a gambling kind of person, you know? Well, people won't like you if you don't find out. Well, I don't care about people. You know, you, you have these responses, there's comebacks to every reason that people would give uh, for every other ethical theory as to why be ethical. But virtue basically says, if you live this way, you will be happier, right? You will be a happy, fulfilled person if you live according to virtue, because that's the way you're made. It's like living a, having a healthy diet. You feel better, because that's the way you were made, you know? Um, and who's going to, who, I've never heard it come back and say, well, I don't care about being happy. <laughs> then you're crazy, you know? <laughs> because everybody wants to be happy. So, so, so you might start out doing it as a means to an end. But along the way, I think you discover that this is, this is what a happy life is made of, you know? So, so it, 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 it's, you wouldn't continue, I think, to do it just as a means because you'll realize that it is not only an end in itself, but in a certain sense, the end of, of human life. Does that, does that help? You, you had, it was, as better. Thank you. A quick comment. Um, the, the, it, it, it works everywhere, right? That, that, the, the, God made us this way, that everything works better when people are good to each other, right? Absolutely everything works better, short term, long term. The only problem is when people don't want to do that, right? Or don't have the strength to do it or choose not to do it. So, the, so virtue is all about getting in the habit of being good to each other. And the, the more you get in the habit, the easier it becomes. Yes, sir. Uh, can we come back next year and you can tell us more? <laughs> Remember, he said when he came to meet me, how quick it took me to make a decision. So my answer is yes, you are most welcome. Please come back. <laughs> <laughs>